Hi guys, welcome back to The Digital Bunch. Today we're going to show you a breakdown of one of our scenes where you'll get to see how we light them, how we model them, and maybe you'll pick up some tricks along the way. So without further ado, let's dive in. Today we'll show you a deconstruction of one of our scenes, an office tower built in Warsaw. This image was one of a few that we rendered for this project. This is what the final image looks like and we will walk you through our thought process and hopefully it can give you some inspiration for your images and projects. The first step is to prepare the whole model with surroundings. Here you can see how detailed the scene had to be to make it look realistic. We usually put a lot of effort into adding detailed assets into our scene and we have 3D modelers on our team who help us do this extremely fast. When the model is complete or almost complete, we move to setting the composition. Now we want to see this building from a human perspective, so we put it roughly in the middle of the frame and we can turn on the image composition helper. This is a cool tool that we will also share more info about in the description below. Here we want to look at the rule of thirds and the golden ratio. So we turn on these helper lines so that the main composition lines of our image, for example the edges of the building, align with these guidelines. The intersections of these lines are helpful to remember throughout our work on this image. We can put light sources or other elements that are important from a composition point of view at the intersections or along these lines. Once we're happy with the first rough camera setup, we can move on to the next stage. Please note that the lighting in your scene can still affect the composition, since shadows and light sources can have a massive influence on the composition and you can still introduce changes in your camera position at a later stage when the light setup is finalized. Now, let's move on to the lighting. The most basic light sources in Corona are Corona Sky and Corona Sun. So just adding the Corona Sky without the sun will not give you a proper result. Here's what it looks like with the sky alone, and here's what happens when you add the sun. What we want to do is to separate this part of the building from this side of the building to shape the volume with light and contrast. In this case, what I can already see is that if we move forward with the corona sky, there will be very little detail in the reflections on the building. Let's try to see what happens with another lighting option and we're going to insert an HDRI from 3D Collective. You can find a link to it in the description below. When you insert the HDRI in your map editor, it will look overexposed in the interactive render, so we have to adjust exposure and add highlight compression. Don't put a lot of highlight compression. As a rule of thumb, in these kind of scenes we want to keep it as low as possible so we don't kill the natural contrast of the image. Now let's move to the color balance. Since this is an evening shot, we want to have a fairly cold environment and then add warm, inviting lights in the interior. We can also rotate the HDRI to create different light options. For example, we can see that this HDRI gives us two lighting options that could work for this image. The first one will allow us to separate these two sides of our building. As you remember, we want to build that volume and make our building really stand out from the rest. Now, the second light option gives us a really nice highlight here that coincidentally falls exactly in the center of the golden spiral. And we love the golden spiral. After some consideration, shaping that volume is going to be more important both for the building and for our client. So we're going to go ahead with the first option. You can now check the comparison between our first camera lighting option with uh, Corona Sun and Sky and the HDRI version. Alright, now let's light this up. We have our ambient light source, the HDRI. The main point of this light source is to introduce the general shape of the main building. We will now be introducing our secondary light sources. Let's add the interior lights, car lights and so on. We need to make sure that the adjacent building does not distract us from our building, so we don't really need to light it up or show interiors. It really should look less interesting than our main hero. Later in post-production we can also maybe darken it and decrease contrast, but we'll get there later. 
Now let's add final adjustments in our tune mapping and here's where it gets more interesting. Here we want to adjust the green magenta balance. Evening shots should have more magenta, morning shots, as a rule of thumb, will have more green. So we're adding more magenta. Now we'll add a LUT that will work well for this shot, play with its opacity, and then add our render elements. Now we're going to add volumetrics to complement the vibe and mood in our image. When we introduce it, we see that it gives us a white halo around the light source. We're going to adjust the color absorption to a bluish tint. This is going to make our lights warmer. Now that this is done, we have these render passes and we can transfer this to post-production. We can then control and adjust certain parts of our render to achieve the desired results. As a final touch, we will add just a little bit of blue. And that is our final result. If you're interested in learning how we post-process this image, let us know in the comments below. Make sure to subscribe so that you're up to date with our content and see you next time. Bye. And that is the final result. If you're interested in... <laughs> <laughs>